Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Seth from Screaming Effects, and today I'm going to show you where to place a guitar buffer. So there's really three main spots where you're gonna place a buffer that I'll show you. One is before a long chord, two is between guitar pedals that don't play nice together, and three is between a wah and a fuzz to make your wah and fuzz work a lot better. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the Clarionics buffer, which I make at Screaming Effects. And I'm also going to show you how a lot of Boss pedals actually have a buffer inside them and you might be able to get away with just using one of those instead of purchasing an extra pedal. Okay, first up is if you have a long cord. So this I think is about a 40 foot cord. It's not really a great quality cord, but uh, it's long and a lot of people use something like this to go from their guitar to their amp or they use it to go from their pedal board to their amp. So you've got this big long cord and what I'll do is I'll play a demonstration of what it sounds like with this chord between your guitar and your amp. Okay, so now this is the Clarionics buffer that I make, and it's a tunable buffer, which means you could control the amount of buffering. We won't go into that just yet, but what you do have is you have your guitar, which is coming into the buffer, and then it's coming out through that big long cable, which is then going into your amplifier. Okay, so now what I'll do is just do a recap and show you both of them back to back. So it's going to go no buffer, buffer. One thing I wanted to tell you about is that a lot of Boss pedals actually have a buffer that's inside them and the buffer is actually always on. So even when the pedal is off, there's a signal that's being buffered. And what you might be able to get away with is to use this pedal, some old Boss pedal that you might have laying around in the off position to buffer the big long cable that's then going to your amplifier. So let's check out that sound and then compare it to the unbuffered long cable. <laughs> Okay, so the second reason that you might want to use a buffer is for pedals that don't play nice together. And so what I'm going to do is a demonstration of an old school Sunface typed match germanium transistor fuzz box. And first I'm going to play it all by itself. And then I'm going to show you what happens if you put one of those boss pedals even in the off position in front of it and how that might affect the sound of your fancy match transistor fuzz box. So here you go, this is the pedal all by itself. So this is the second one where what's going on is that there's two pedals that really don't play as nicely together as they should. And what you'll hear is that you have your guitar signal coming in, it's going through a boss pedal which is actually in the off position, but what happens is the buffer that was on that we showed before actually changes the sound of your fuzz box a little bit. So let's give a demo of that. So what you have now is a pedal that wasn't working nicely with some other pedal because the impedances weren't matched correctly. And what I've done is I've placed this Clarionics buffer, which is a tunable buffer in between it. And you can see that it's actually turned down a little bit. 
and you can hear the difference when I play this compare it to the old sound that was kind of you know it sounded like it was farting out with the boss pedal right before the fuzz pedal And so what you can oftentimes use a buffer for is to place it in between two pedals that don't really work very well. In some cases you might need a tunable buffer like what I make, but in other cases maybe another boss pedal between two things that don't sound that great, that might work out for you. This is our last example and this is where you have your guitar going into a wah-wah which is then going into a fuzz and that's coming back out to your amp. And this fuzz, it could be any kind of low impedance type pedal where you'll hear oscillations and just a feedback and it's the wrong kind. So let me show you what that sounds like. So what happens is if you have your pedal on, it will be playing, but then when you turn your wah on, it will oscillate. So here, check that out. So that's the pedal. And when we turn the wah on, So you really don't want that kind of noise in your wah when you're up on stage playing in front of people. So that's the third use that I really like to recommend for a buffer and it's to put the buffer in between the wah and the fuzz. Okay so now what I have is I put a buffer in between the wah and the fuzz. So it's going your guitar into your wah which is then going into this buffer which is then going into a fuzz box, which is then going through that long cable into your amp. And what this buffer is doing is making the wah and the fuzz box work together so that it doesn't oscillate. So the first test is all set up without the wah, and then I'll turn the wah and you'll see it's not oscillating anymore. This is really why I designed this Clarionix buffer. It's to go in between a wah and a fuzz pedal because it really makes the two work together nicely. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna put the wah on the floor and just show you how much more range of the wah you can get with a fuzz than you normally get without the buffer on there. So now I'm just using the wah on the floor and you can really see that you get a good wah with your, your guitar playing. <laughs> Those are the three places that I recommend placing guitar buffer. One of them is before a very long chord. Another one is in between two pedals that don't work that well together. And the third one is in between a wah-wah and a fuzz box so that you get really good wah range and you don't get oscillation problems. However, the final thing that I really want to note is that if you like the way that your guitar sounds and you don't have any problems, I don't recommend using one. Just use what you have and you know, go play your guitar. So with that, thanks very much.